So I have prepared like nine, almost 15 different uh, ways how to uh, develop power and speed of the first step of the jump. We won't, hold, we won't make the whole system how the practice should look like with a warm-up, with everything. Uh, so I'll explain now um, what is it about. So when we do this, let's say, heavy squatting with additional fast exercises, we do between each of sets around two to three minutes rest. Okay? We repeat two to three times and then we have a longer break and we repeat everything again. So uh, for the start, we will start with the imitation simulation of very heavy squat with the Olympic bar. We will imagine that there is 150 kilos on and um, usually with this big amount of weight we do two, three repetitions max, then we have to recuperate a little. We take a break of maybe two minutes if it's really, really heavy, and then we do additional exercises, speed exercises with some lighter weights. So now we will do the heavy squat with Olympic bar, two to three repetitions. We will rest, not for two minutes, uh, but in real life, there it is. And then we will do some vertical jump offs uh, with the kettlebells. So we can start. So, yeah. Deep. So we, we should go as low as we can go, okay? That means that as long as our heels doesn't go up, this is how much we can go low. So when we finish the first exercise, which is, like we said, very heavy exercise, we take the kettlebell, which this one is 8 kilo, but usually we should do that with 20, 24 or heavier. It all depends in what kind of condition we are. So from this position, we just do full power jump off in the air with both legs. repeat the heavy squat two to three times and then with the jumps with the lighter weight which is kettlebell we can also put the legs on two boxes so we can go really low uh, these jumps should not be more than six repetitions because everything under six we already switching to the different energy and we start thinking that we won't make it and we start getting slower when we don't do the full takeoff of the jump with the kettlebell, yeah. So the heavy squat is two to three, and then we do, after two minutes rest, we shake the legs, we are prepared, and we do a full six uh, explosive jump takeoffs. The other possibility also, it all depends what we need, it's that after this heavy squatting we do five to six uh, jumps with a heavy kettlebell of 20, 24, again, all depends how strong we are, that when we swing we use the force of the kettlebell so we jump forward. The next one would be that after the heavy squatting we would go on the inertial eccentric machine that we will see now and uh, 
we, sim so we are simulating this simple mad ball throw over our head. You all know this exercise. When you grab the mad ball, so when you do full takeoff, like bam, you throw yourself back and throw the, the, the mad ball as far as you can. About this machine, this is a um, eccentric machine. That means that how much you pull, this is how much the machine pulls back. So it's not that you to do the, the throw, the mad ball, you have to then stab stabilize because the machine will hit back. Uh, what is good about this machine is that it uh, doesn't matter how strong you are. I don't need to put any weights on and me and someone who is stronger than me, we will work equally hard. It won't be too hard for me and it won't be too easy for him in opposite. Because the machine reacts on how much power you give her. And now it's everything without the weights. You see this small uh, piece of metal, you can put it on the on the belt and uh, eccentric power gets even even higher. This I will try to demonstrate. So that means that from this position, you try to catch it and then explosively. So this is um, actually better than on, only the mad ball throw because like I said before, machine works in both ways. So you work eccentric and concentric. So after the heavy squatting you go here and uh, you can do this one. Actually I was doing with the players, I let them do as long as they can maintain the speed. If somebody was strong enough to repeat 10 times, do it as long as you are fast. So we all the time transfer the heavy squatting, the slow movements into something that we will eat actually on the court. Fast movement, jump is fast, acceleration is fast, changing direction is fast. The simple lunge squat. We all know that basketball players are approximately two meters and up. Now it's very heavy and very hard for some players who are not used to lifting heavy weights to put on their back more than 100 kilos. They're not used to, they're big, they're not stable. This is very bad for the spine. Uh, this is what I do. I do one leg squat in lunge position, which means immediately 50% off for the back. The back is not under pressure, at least not as much with the full weight. What is happening with the leg, if we have the maximum of 100 with a normal squat, now we put 50. So the leg will be under the same pressure as this, both of them when you do 100. What is better is that we have stability involved, we have uh, spine 50% off pressure, we have to be all the time in the correct position, otherwise the exercise is not good, goodly uh, executed. And we do, let's say, five, you can show, five with left, first it only with left. And in this exercise, the hamstring is much more engaged than in the normal squat. Now, he finished five squats with the left. Now, put the bar down. What I demand from the players after, they do the five squats. They can also put the back leg a little elevated, but don't put it too high because it doesn't make a difference if it's here or here the leg. It makes a difference only because if they are not flexible enough in this position, they will go to the hyperextension because it will be too high. So this much is already enough, okay? So after 
five squats with the left leg. Now he has to do with the left leg five to six high jumps without rest in between. To, uh, try to touch with the knee to the chest. No, that's it. Immediately, bam, 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 bam. High knee, high knee, high knee. Okay. Then he rests a little, go back on the other leg, the right leg, and when he finish with the right leg squat, he go one leg jumps with the right leg. We usually repeat this five, six sets. All depends on which stage where the game is and stuff. Do you stretch the, you said to raise the leg like this? Uh, if you uh, elevate the leg. So you put the leg a little up. Yeah. Much more stretching here. But if you're not stretched enough, you can go to hyperextension. It's not good for the back. Uh, another uh, thing that you can do, let's say when you do one leg squats, you finish with the left, you take the bands, put this, this belt on. So after he finish, put it on the side. After, when he finish, he is already prepared with the belt around his waist. What I do now, I make him jump on the side and back, like five jumps. One, two, full, full power. Hop, hop, hop. With the same leg that he make a squat, okay? He put it down. Put it down. Uh, it always needs to be, always needs to be the takeoff with the same leg that he was squatting. Okay. Uh, if it's too heavy for someone that it's not strong enough, you can also use just simple slide jumps from one leg to another, six left, six right. But needs to be full motion, full speed, as far as it's possible. It's also good. So again, every time I do something heavy, I, after that, immediately, with a little rest in between, make the player to do something very fast and as, as, as similar as possible to the, what is happening on the court. So the next exercise that I was doing with the players, it's very simple. You can do it on the box if you're not flexible enough in the ankle to go all the way down, but uh, it goes like that. Imagine that I have a mad ball. So I'm standing, and now I have to do full squat. This squat is not okay if you're not flexible and you're already going lifting your heel, okay? This is not, because too much stability and destability on the first part of the, of the foot, and it's not okay. So it's better that you go maybe on the box, and it's better to do it like that, okay? If you cannot do with the leg up and on the floor. The player that I was coaching could do 25 on one leg, full deep squats. So. Uh, 
possible. So after this exercise, I usually do something which is faster than this exercise himself, uh, uh, himself because this exercise, when you go, you cannot actually say that it's very fast. So jumps with the band, jumps from the leg to leg, uh, one leg high jumps like we showed before. This is all that you can implement into this complex when you're developing explosive power. You can also use, after every heavy exercise, the simple agility letter. Uh, simple agility drill, which activates a lot of um, the calves and the foot and uh, hip rotation. Can you show it? Yes, with the hands up front. So maximum speed, you do the heavy squatting. So okay, perfect. This is one of the this is one of the exercises that actually I like the most because it's very basketball uh, basketball orientated. Everything what you need it needs to be fast. After heavy it needs to be fast. Otherwise you won't be fast. The same principle I take uh, use when I do the bench press with the players. Uh, after the bench press exercise, I make them lie on the floor, lie on your back on the floor, and imagine this is five kilo med ball. So this is five kilo ball. Extend your arms. I try to drop. He will catch it. React and throw it out. So after the bench press, he goes up, but fast, boom, boom. This is very light, so it goes higher. Okay? With mad ball, you cannot play volleyball. So you actually have to let it go on your chest and explosive push out. So this is how I transform for the hands. Another thing, what is uh, to tell about the upper body, uh, I use a lot of boxing exercises because developing of hand speed is very important. There's another thing, the upper body is not the same as the lower body. So if we make and use the same principles for the legs and for the hands, we will get opposite result. So let me explain. intensity long-term exercise for the upper body for the hands we're talking the hands will not grow okay if you do the same practice for the legs the legs will grow example bicycle drivers long-term high intensity pedaling they have legs like this 
Rowers, on the other hand, they don't have hands like this. Boxers, they don't have length hands like this, but they have strong hands, lean muscles, and very fast. Developing upper body, I usually use bars from six to nine kilos. What I demand from the players and that they can uh, make exercise as fast as possible and not longer than 20 seconds. And with the same 20 seconds rest or double, it all depends what we're developing. Usually throwing out in front of head, behind of the head, one up front, one up. Simple snatch imitation and stuff like that. So for upper body, basically, I use these exercises because when you hold someone that he won't go past you, you can touch your chest, it's soft. If the core won't hold in the shoulder, nothing will hold him. You can try yourself. In this position, this muscle is very, very soft now. It's not contracted. Shoulder is, my core is, and the leg. So think when you, I'm not saying that it's happening a lot, but I've seen a lot of examples that they're pushing bench press to unconscious and they're not getting the result that they want. They can press a lot, but hands are slow, they cannot catch the ball. Okay, for, number, for five position that's a little different, but in general if you want to have a player who can catch the ball, who is fast, uh, who can sprint because the, in, the force that Hans is giving when you start sprinting the first two steps is from the hands. Try to sprint like that and try to sprint with hands like here. This is why the sprint, sprinters are so big and so fast also upstairs. Now we'll go to eccentric uh, belt. We will show you how to do the power exercises for the, for the quadriceps and uh, this is how it looks like. This exercise is good for many reasons. You all know what is the jumping knee. This is the patellar ligament who is shrinked or overstressed and it hurts when you jump. This is the only exercise, there's another one without the belt, which you can actually also stretch this patellar ligament and make this pain to go away. In the same time, you're developing quadriceps when you're doing this exercise and you're developing the core stability. So in this position, what you do, you go down and you go up. So the whole muscle is working. You can go up. If it's too heavy, you can start with simple this. For this exercise you don't need any weights, okay? I was doing, uh, a year ago I was doing test on myself, I didn't want to squat the whole year, not once, I did one squat with the, with the weights, but what I was doing, average once a week to once in 10 days, I make practice for the quadriceps uh, five repetitions fully, like now, even lower, so I can touch the floor with my shoulder and up. With five to six uh, sets, with two to three minutes rest in between, two days before the new year, I went to the gym, put 
the bar in my, in my back, warm up of course, 150 max, I lift. And I didn't squat once in a year. This is how powerful this exercise is. Uh, this belt if I do heavy squatting with some player and of course we need to stretch a little in the end. I'm not using it as a stretching after he's tired because it's wrong. I'm using it instead of last one or two sets so we can do still power but in eccentric movement so when the muscle is stretching. Go. Go up your hands. So in this position, he go up now. You squeeze the glutes and you go up. Try to go lower. No. One more. It's very, very powerful exercise, but this is not for a day, everyday use because it's eccentric. That means that you use it in preparation time maybe twice a week, otherwise not more than once a week. It's very powerful and... Uh, Another exercise, because I was talking about the stretching of the patellar ligament, this is very good, is if you don't have, the, have this belt, you simply lift your leg, you go down with, with one and up with both. Before practice, down and up. Okay, now we will go on the core development, because power of the core is very important, because of stability, because of when we are in the jump shot, somebody will try to foul us or distract us. So if you move, the ball goes away. Okay, we will start with eccentric machine and also in the same time I will show you because I was talking before about uh, uh, dynamic balance, how we can develop this too. I use for this two exercises. One is one leg squat from this position. So you have to pull and hold. The leg is working, the glutes are working, the back is working, stability is working, hand is working, rotators are working. Another one is that from the lunge position, this is also exercise for developing the uh, first step. Rotation. Up. Then we have simple side pulls. From this position, you can go from this position, you can do high rotation. 
It's the same for the other side. And uh, you can do developing triceps. You can lie on the floor, you can do biceps. You can lie on the floor, I don't have the brace to attach it. You pull this one on the ankle, you pull down. Okay, you can pull on the side and you can pull on the other side. So everything what is for the glute and for the hip development you can still do. Uh, I'll show you now how to to in the plank position developing with a dynamic pull so you go to the plank position and you pull go hips needs to be straight I'm usually having fun and said if I put the beer on your back you should not spill it you know You can do this exercise in pairs. So I'm across him, diagonal, and we have to synchronize pull. Okay, left, right. Hold it, hold it. Now hold it. You can also do like this. One is holding, the one is pulling, and then you just switch. He has to hold so I don't move him. And I'll do this. No, 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 you just hold. Try to hold. So I'm just pulling. Now I'm holding and he's pulling. And then we just switch sides. Very simple exercises. Okay. How you can develop core is also, you can do it with a kettlebell, you can do side bends, you can do windmills, you can do twists standing up, you can put on the back and do bend overs with the weight. This is all helping for developing core, but one thing is for the core, very important. This is slow muscle. This is slow muscle and if you want to develop it, you have to work long with her. When you hear that you need to do abs for 10 minutes, you will do this. How should I do it 10 minutes? Well, there are ways. I found out the system and the protocol for developing the core that you can actually work and rest for the 10 minutes non-stop. There are short intervals from four to seven seconds. Uh, work rest, work rest all the time. You just switch exercises and it works perfectly. Uh, it's the same with the back. If you want to develop back, for those people who love to do deadlift, which is very good exercises for the back and for the hamstring, for the glutes, the back will develop much faster if you do heavy lifting, three repetition for 10 sets, then medium for 10 repetition and three sets. Uh, and there's the last thing I would say about explosivity are deep jumps and box jumps. When I do them with the basketball players, I don't use weights for that because they're not used to, most of them. So what I do, for example, is I make them do exercises for the calves. They do 20 lifts, then they make from 20 to 25 normal squats to activate the muscle and then I can make I make them jump 20, 70 80 centimeters up 12 times so jump up step slowly down go back to the line and this is how it goes and for the drop jumps I use a little lower not usually more than 60 centimeters because they are heavy and their ankles are most of the time not into good shape because of the taping and everything and it's in general they have bad, bad, their ankles are in bad shape. Uh, 
So I do the same activation for the calves, the same activation for the hamstring, and uh, I mean the quadriceps, and I do drop jumps, but I'll teach them how to jump, how to land, never hit the heel on the floor. So every time needs to be on the first part of the, of the foot. And I, do, I don't do more than 12. And I don't do in the one practice with them more than 30 to 40 drop jumps because they're not used to and it's very powerful exercise. They can have stress fractures and everything. So, and I don't do it also more than once in a week or once in 10 days because they are not volleyball players, they're basketball players. Uh, thing before we go to uh, anaerobic capacity development shortly on the court with the drills, agility drills. I'll explain how it looks like when you land on your heel. Imagine that you have 100 kilos and you jump from one meter and you land on your heel. The pressure on the first vertebra through the heel is times 10 your weight. How many times can you afford yourself in the career to do that before you will get really hernia or the disc will pop out? One ton. If you're 100 kilo and you land on the hill from one meter height. This is how much pressure it is on the spine. This is how much you have to be careful to teach small kids already how to land and how to jump before they start doing anything else. Now, um, shortly, because time goes fast, I'll just explain and show about anaerobic glitolytic capacity. This is like we were talking before. Uh, you can imagine maximum sprint from 20 up to over a minute sprint. How much energy, how much pain you have to carry to make, to make it. So if you want to be good and resistant to lactic acid in the basketball game, you have to do that and you have to practice like that. But what I don't like is to put the basketball player on a 400 meter track and make him do 400, 400, 400, 400, and in this way develop his uh, ability to clean the body from the lactic acid that is produced. So if you want to develop resistance on the lactic acid, you have to do you have to do the drills that are at maximum speed and they last, like I said, from 20 up to 60 seconds, sometimes even more. Uh, because So we will now simulate one, almost one minute work, but a little differently. Uh, we will change direction, and this is one, two, three, maybe three and a half meters, okay? So maximum sprint, slide, slide, 
and full sprint back pedal. And he's already going to the position because the start will be in three to five seconds. So every time he do max, I give him to, a little to rest, but this rest is fake because the lactic acid is start to going up. So this movement is much faster than you would measure his movements when he's going 400 meter sprint. Because it's short, it's change direction, a little rest, again, again, again. We will repeat this six times. So sprint, slide, slide, back pedal. And every time I'll give him the sign to go. You ready? Let's go. Up. 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 Ready? Up. Two more. Up. One more. One more. Up. Okay, legs heavy, yeah? So, this was not even a minute. That was not even a minute. Full speed, all directions, like we use it in basketball, short stop and again, short stop and again. We do that, this practice like that. We first do on the three meters. So, we, let's say this is three meters. Now he will, he will have good two minutes, three minute rest. And we will just prolong this one for one meter. And we will repeat the same six repetitions just on one meter longer tra track. He will rest again for three minutes. We will prolong again for one meter. We go to five meters. The longer it's even, then uh, more tired you are, the longer there is, more tired you are. Uh, and heavier. So we repeat this six times. He rests three minutes, now we go back for one meter. Back to the four, we repeat six times, rest three minutes, and we go back to the three meters. So what we do, three meters, it's per first time, you can actually make it. Four is a little heavier, five is very heavy, and then if you want to maintain the same speed, we have to lower it the distance because otherwise he will be too tired and again we would come to the point that we are not developing the maximum speed in a short distance. We can also use this system uh, when we are ready a little more. He was already doing it uh, last two weeks. Just three sets, three meters, four meters, five meters, but each of them ten times. It is very, very hard drill, three minutes rest in between, and you can have this, believe me, for the main part of the practice easily. Another drill, the last one, um, I call it 93639, and I usually use the volleyball court, which is this yellow line. And it's very simple, if you have a team, especially a young team, which they need to be put into the competitive uh, position, you put two 
players on each side and you make them do the drills and the drills goes like that so from the nine meter is up to the second yellow one because this one you sprint full speed this is six this is nine so the first task is that he do all the turns around the right leg so he run right he run right right and sprint to the other side they do Wide leg. Turn, turn, go, turn, turn, and go. You can do the same with the left leg. So, so you teach them how to turn. Turn, turn, turn. The next one is to teach them how to stop, go back, and start. This is the same drill, so you sprint to the middle, you stop on the right leg, bam, you go back, you start with the right leg. Again, up front, stop with the right, and start with the right. And you do the same with the left leg, go. Go, go. Go, go. If you want to make exercises heavier, just make them do over there with the right leg and go back with the left, and the same drill, and full speed. And as you see, this is actually the distance that the basketball is played. Actually, the number of position, the five positions running the longest distances from basket to the basket, everybody are somewhere around, okay? The next drill is much more basketball orientated. So what you do is you sprint to the middle, you stop on the right leg, bam. Now you slide, start with the left, stop with the right, slide, start with the left. Try. Let's go. Slide. Bam. Slide. Bam. That's it. And you can do the same with the other side. If you repeat each side, left two times, right two times, with turning, with front and back, this is already eight. Eight. Another four, two times with the left, two times with the right, this is 12 repetitions. And I usually do not more than 24, but start with then 16, 18, 20, I progress slowly. What I'm trying to tell you, the coaches, that this is first three are basic movements. Now another set, you can imagine, go, turn on the right leg, stop on the right leg, sprint, back pedal, sprint, or you can go, okay, stop, slide, sprint, turn. You can mix these three exercises. So you have turning, you have stop and go, you have slides. Just combine. The more they are tired, let them think. Make them think what they need to do. The, the more unusual, the better it is. Any questions? In season, you talk about uh, conditioning like it's pre-season, yes? Yeah. Yes. And about in-season. Do you perform something like this? In yes. While yes. 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 But not a lot. Uh, usually we did it, um, this SEQ, warm-up and uh, accelerations and everything. If the game is on Saturday, we do that on Thursday. That was the last, last time we did something like that, time-wise. Uh, in preparation time, this time of practices you use in the last uh, preparation period before the game starts. But you have to maintain. What you prepare in two months, if you don't maintain, it lasts eight weeks, not more. And the team will start to go down. So they need to do once or two times a week power practice. They need to do speeding up and exercises which actually, they are repeating what they already know. So. It is the same on the game.